Alright, so first, um, before we get started, oh my gosh, this is such a huge surprise for you guys, by the way. Uh, you hear my voice like that because I'm like right by the camera. Fixing this up, because I want to be able to see what you guys are talking about. They were saying like it's hard to get, uh, dang, that's a bad angle too. Okay, okay, that's looking better. Good, 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 good. Right there. Alright. I definitely pay attention to your feedback. They're saying it's harder to see the cards. This is the best I can do. I don't have a better camera. This is the best I can do. You're going to have to just do with this until I have a better camera. And I'm sorry. And I'm not saying it in a rude way. This is just the best that I can do right now. I don't have a better camera. So please, I hope that you guys understand. I hope you're satisfied. Um, but I don't want this to get in the way of the profile. So with that out of the way, really have to do that because I was getting feedback. People are saying it's hard to see the cards. And I don't want it to be difficult for you to read my cards. I want you to be able to see things clearly. Um, so, I hope that looks better. If not, I'm sorry. Um, so, what's going on, you guys? Again, it's your boy, Three Stacks in this thing, baby. And I'm coming at you guys with pretty much pure Orcus with um, some splashable spice. Um, it, it's, it's pretty dripping, bro. It, it, it's saucy. I like it. And uh, I, I wanted to show you guys how I play Orcus because it, it's been hurting my feelings. Hurting my feelings and breaking my heart the way I've been seeing Orcus played. And it's not I'm not bashfully imposing. So, that's the thing. Whenever I share my opinion, I'm very subtle with my opinion. I'm not bashfully imposing like most people are with me when they share their, their opinions with me. It's like they impose it on me like it's a fact and you have to believe it's three stacks and you're wrong, you're wrong. But no, I'm not saying anyone's wrong and anyone's right. But it's just the way I've been seeing Orcus played has been breaking my heart. I wanted to show you guys how Orcus can operate when you actually focus more of on a pure Orcus build instead of like Gar Dragon Orcus and, and, and you know like every, everything else. Like it's, it's still a good deck, but what I have for you guys today is basically an Orcus deck and there's like, okay, there's supporting engines in it, but literally the only thing that's not outside of your typical starter cards and dangers, the only thing different is this, and I'm playing the Preta Plants and a Kyoto Waterfront Gamma Seal Package because I feel that Orcus... The, the board they put up with one crescendo is not good enough. We need to be able to put out cards like Appaloosa and Gamasil in addition to that so that you can still have a viable field. But I wanted to do it a non-conventional way, and I know Kyoto is not very popular right now, and you don't see it in the metagame. Not to say that it's not a popular card, I'm just saying right now in the format. So Kyoto is not an anticipated card, and you don't really see it that much. That's why I felt it was a good approach for my Orcus, because I still wanted to have that ingenuity and, you know, have that kind of maintain my integrity and the innovation, but not deviate from the trajectory of the deck, which is still you're trying to go off turn one. I play combo variants of Orcus always, and you guys are, I think you guys are going to like this one, especially my actual Orcus lovers. So let's go ahead and get into the list. But one last thing, I never, ever say this in my profiles, and I have to remind myself now, if you guys would like to, if you like if you like my content, if you appreciate me and you would like to actually show me you appreciate me instead of just saying it, I would really appreciate that. I have a PayPal and also a Patreon set up. The link is in every single one of my videos. I think that it's better to just start reminding you guys because some people don't always read the description. And I'm not asking or begging. If you would like to support me, I would greatly appreciate it. But either way, if you don't support my cause, it doesn't mean that I'm not going to make content for you. I'm still going to do what I can. Um, just understand, you know, this is an out-of-pocket channel, so donations really help to speed the process of content production and also getting necessary equipment that I just cannot afford out of my own pocket because I got bills just like you and I have a life just like you. But let's get into the profile. That's enough rambling, right? I apologize for all the rambling. Let's go, baby. So we got three copies of Orcus Nightmare. Not one, not two, but three. Look at all my other Orcus lists. Not the mixture ones, but my my third place ARG one, my first place undefeated. I have like three or four undefeated lists that all play three Nightmare. Because opening with a Nightmare or a Hard Pourer, whenever you go into your combo and discard for cost, means that you can play through one Hand Trap, and even if they ask your Hard Pourer, you still get to shuffle it back, and you get to set Crescendo. So it either means you play through one Hand Trap and get any Orca Speller Trap you want, or you play through two Hand Traps because they can Veiler or Impermanence Galatea, obviously. So I just really like opening these cards. You don't have to play it this way. That's one thing. I'm never going to tell you how to play your deck. Never. I'm going to provide a blueprint for you. I'm going to give you insight. I'm going to explain everything the best that I can to try to answer those questions because I can't answer every question in the comments, so I try to knock them out in the profile. And also, I'm going to give you guys a test hand to verify and confirm that my deck does exactly what I say it does. No caps, baby, but I want all the smoke. I'm just playing. Uh, two copies of Skeletor. Now, Skeletor is actually my favorite Orcus, and after turn one, it's the best. It's the best. Bringing back Link Force, there's no better feeling. I play one Bombard. You don't have to play Bombard. There's actually a really nice combo. This is like a pure Orcus list. Like I said, basically all the other engines in it are supporting cards. Because why? The thing with Orcus, how we play it is we need to play a bunch of cards that can get two monsters on the field. So everything in here is just to get two monsters on the field to get into the Orcus. I do play the Gamma Seal, but that's just to raise my ceiling because I need Omni Negate so I don't have a bad matchup. If you put up cards like Jackal King and you play Strikers, you lose. But if you put up Gamma Seal, 
It doesn't matter what Yu-Gi-Oh deck in the planet you're playing. Gamma Seal can interact with them. Um, so I hope you guys understand that. And that's the similar terminology, not terminology, reasoning behind the Bombard. Because I can make Savage. And it's really easy. If you open a Harpoor or a Nightmare when you discard for cost with Mermaid and you summon out Nightmare, you can actually summon your Borload Savage before you even get to the middle of your combo. You can start off with Savage and you just grab the Link 2. If you want him to have more targets, you wait till later in the combo and you can grab a Link 3 like Long Gear Sue and equip it to him if you want. It's up to you. But Bombard's definitely worth it. It's also a surplus extension to all your combos. You get to filter your hand a bit. You do play a heavier Orcus lineup. It's so great, and it op it opens the window for so many different secret opportunities. It's just Savage is my only choice. But playing Orcus, I found that sometimes Super Quantum, uh, the Quantum Dragon, the Dark Attribute one came up, Scarlet Red Dragon, Art Fiend, so many different Dark Synchros come up, like Dark End Dragon, that I want to play, but I don't want to cater all those, allocate all those slots in my extra deck for this one of. It's nice for the Savage play, though. It's sick. It's a really good card. Um, I was considering actually playing three of this and some machine dupes and stuff, but I like, I, I like my list right now how it is. And then one copy of World 1. It's absolutely correct to play this when you're playing a heavier Orcus lineup. So you guys are going to look at this already and then say, this is distasteful, this bricks, this doesn't work. Now, I do want to ask you a favor. Before you just jump to conclusions and say something works, can you do me this one favor? Test it out first. Actually play it before you just say it doesn't work because you, you don't know, and it's just common sense. Will you really know if something works if you don't try it? That's like saying that refrigerator isn't on. You won't know until you open it. You won't know if this list works or if this breaks until you try it. So I really need you guys to do that for me because too many people just think they know everything without even doing the research or trying it out. Try this list out, bro. A heavier Orcus lineup really does work. I will vouch for it. I'm an Orcus enthusiast, dude. I can vouch. It works. Play more Orcus when you're trying to focus on a pure list. If you just want an Orcus engine, just play a couple of Nightmares of Harp and call it a day. Uh, next up for the dangers, I played three Chupacabra. Now I did sell my Nessies, I did sell my uh, Chupacabra, my uh, Jackalopes, and I did sell my Suchinokos. So you're gonna see some dangers that everybody thinks is bad, but in my opinion, there's no such thing as a bad danger. They're all great cards. Uh, but you're gonna see some non-conventional ones because I sold the expensive ones. Uh, three Bigfoot. I don't play hand traps, and I think cards like um, Bigfoot and also, which we're getting to right now, Thunderbird are really insane going second. Not only because they're big bodies, but because if you you miss with them, they can actually take a card away from the field or bait a negation. Um, what I also like with the big dangers is when you're going second against Danger Thunder and also Pendulums and combo decks like that that put out hard negations in the form of monsters, you can summon cards like Bigfoot, Thunderbird, and Mothman and uh, Dogman, and what you can do is just attack over the Jackal King, attack over the Don Dragster, bait the seal, and then attack the Sloth, attack over the Endymion with the Bigfoot. So what happens then is you don't have to burn resources baiting the negates, you just attack over the negators and then make your plays in main phase two. And I'm saying that because that's what I've been doing. Like, I've been doing that forever. Like, the list that I had with 27 dangers, bro, I played like three Crusadia Guard Dragons, putting up three, four negates, lost a dice roll, broke their board with nothing but dangers because I was just attacking over their boss monsters. Like, the big dangers are so good. I don't know why people don't play three of them. Besides the, if it gets discarded, it doesn't have a good effect. Every danger's good, it doesn't matter. They're extenders. I don't want to hear that. We have two copies of Dogman. Uh, Dogman's another gigantic danger, and also he's a level 7. Now, Nessie would be a good replacement if I had Nessie. Why does that matter? He's a level 7. Brass Bombard. 1 plus 7 is 8. Borlode Savage. Let's go. Two copies of Ogopogo. The other reason for playing the level 8s is because I love Zombie Signs. Zombie Signs never less my Orcus list, ever. And also, being able to hard summon Ding Girsu is pretty nice. It's like thick, bro. It really, like, it's, it's nice. Just doing it. You don't have to, but it's nice when you do because it's so rewarding. Getting him with three materials, protecting your board three times is so rewarding. When you're playing Dracos and they're like, Jesus, how many times do I have to pop? Like, bro, it's so good. Um, now, these are the starter cards. So, dangers are extenders. I don't consider dangerous starters. They're extenders. The Orcus, obviously, can't. you can't draw a hand with five Orcus in play, but you don't have to worry about that. Trust me, this deck flows perfectly. And I got some other stuff in the back row and the spell and traps. You're going to see. You're going to see all the spice. So these are the starter cards of choice. I play three Lone Fires, three Scorpios. This is a one and a half card combo that requires a discard for costs. And essentially, what it accomplishes, this is a one card Skull Dread, which means Gamma Seal and Kyoto Waterfront. If you open Waterfront, you're going to special Gamma Seal. Bam. That's three Omni Negates. Why is Gamma Seal always three Omni Negates, three stacks? Orca's Crescendo goes from the field to the graveyard when you activate it, and it puts another counter on your field spell. That's the answer to your question. The other thing is also it searches instant fusion. So if you're not feeling that aggressive and you want to play conservative, moderate tempo, trying to conserve your resources and not go all in, especially if you're not trying to like lose to crazy side deck cards, 
Use this, search out Instant Fusion, put up Dinger Soup, Winda, Crescendo, and any other Orcus Link. If your hand's really bonkers, like, you can you can go even further. But the Predator Plants are, like, the best starter cards for Orcus because they get you the Orcus combo plus Extenders. So it's literally a starter and an Extender in one. It's the embodiment of power, baby. Let's go. Three copies of Neospace Connector. Two-card hand loop. Whenever you open Connector and Extender, I rip <gasps> two cards on my opponent's hand. I summon the Bigfoot. Everything in their hands less than 3,000, I guarantee you. Just take whatever combo pieces. Even if they're not playing hand traps, you're playing pendulum. Put out a big foot if you can. Put out one of the big dangers. That's the other thing they help is with your when you're sniping with your um your dolphin. Like you're playing, let's say you're playing pendulums. You look at their hand. You have a big foot. You can discard any monster you want, bro. Anything except the dark worm. Don't do it. So yeah, it's really good to do the two card hand loop, and then you can put up four omni negates. I'm saying things that I've done. I would never ever say this that can do something that I haven't done with it already. I don't do the speculation theories. There's no speculatory theories where it's like, well, technically this deck could do it. No, I say what it can do based off of what I have done with it already. So I can vouch that I'm not capping. And then we have one copy of Dolphin. Um, so these are all starter cards. Um, even if you don't open any one of these, and let's think of it. Uh, let's count the starter cards. Really, like you got one, two. That doesn't count because you need an extender. One, two, three, four, five. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Any 11 of those one-card combos, if you don't open any of those, and you don't open any dangers, you can still play Yu-Gi-Oh! You're going to see when we get there. Uh, one copy of Gamma Seal, one Trick Cloud, and one Gym Knight. Alexandra is just the sexiest one in my personal opinion. I just, I really love it a lot. It's so good. It has an actual effect, and it's like, you can actually summon it, and, you know, if your opponent's really that crazy, they might actually just be like, Valor on summon. I don't know, but I just play it because it's cute, and it's secret rare. Uh, but Trick Clown, you got, I feel like you don't have to play it, but if you don't play it, uh, Predator Plant or for a Scorpio would never be a one-card Skull Dread, because this is the fourth monster you get out um, off of it. And Gamma Seal's being searched off Waterfront, and we're just playing it that way. Um, so I like the boards that I put up, because my boards are less susceptible to Super Poly. Because also, the way you can do it is, when you're playing around Super Poly, you don't put out Winda, you don't even put out Dangir Suit. You just hard summon a Galatea, banish Nightmare for cost just to send the Skeletor, use her to shuffle that back, set Crescendo, and that's it. You don't summon anything else, you just leave Gamma Seal, Skull Dread, and Galatea. That way they have to have Spear Mode, but you play around Super Poly, alright? So that helps you out, just helping you out, you know, giving you insight. For spells, we played three copies of Kyoto Waterfront. I love to see this card. I would play Terraforming, um, but I didn't want to play the Terraforming because I didn't have space. Three Frozen Rose. Any extender plus this is still going to be not full combo, but... If Skull Dread draws the right cards, yeah, it's going to be full combo. And normally it is because Skull Dread drawing four is just so good. Uh, we have three copies of Allure of Darkness. Um, this also helps to filter your hands. You also have some Saki one ofs that help you to get to the Orcus combo. This is another one card combo. This can be the one card combo right here. This plus any extra monster in your hand pretty much is an Orcus combo. This is a one card combo. Um, and then we got to get all of these spells out the way. All of them. And if you guys are wondering why I play both Instant and Bring It, it's because I like the option of, okay, the Winda's not always going to be the best every time, and sometimes I just need that one card to get me Skull Dread, because if my hand is not that broken, you know, I need that Skull Dread, not just for the drawing, but I don't have extra resources to vomit out those kind of monsters, so I need that, that Scorpio to accomplish what three extra cards in my hand would. So I still feel that the Garnet Brick is necessary to play in this deck. Now, these are the best spells and traps in the deck, what I'm about to show you guys. And I already know people are going to bash me and be skeptical because of my card choices, but I never ever put anything on my channel that I have not practiced, tested, and mastered. So, we're starting off with three Orchestrator Return. I'll wait for the hit comments. I'll wait for the It's Hard One per turn. You can't activate one more than one. Like, I love these comments sometimes because it's like, it's common sense. It's like, of course, I know that. I know the card's Hard One per turn. I'm still playing three of it. This card is not even being played in any Orcus list right now. That's why my feelings are being hurt. Like, the way I see people playing Orcus kind of hurts me because they're like, one, one. You can play, there's so much more interactions you get. There's so many combos that you produce and plays that you never get to see unless you play more of the Orcus back row. And it, it just makes Galatea the most valuable follow-up ever. Setting this on your opponent's turn with Babel when you already flipped the Crescendo on them, like, and just setting this, this is a follow-up. You're drawing three cards for your turn. And guess what? You're not only drawing three cards for turn, but you can use Galatea on your draw phase again to get yourself... Either Babel if you didn't, well you should have Babel at that point because you're doing it as a quick fix. But to get yourself either Einset or one of the three, not two, not one, three crescendos. Three stacks, it breaks, you can't draw, like bro, bro, for one, don't don't pull out the common sense obvious like, 
obviously, obviously, I know what these cards are. Obviously, I know that you can only activate one. Obviously, I know you can only activate one. I'm playing them at this ratio for a reason. So let me live my life and let me play my cards the way I want to play it. This is a blueprint list for you guys to help you out to get a better information. And also, for those who like Orcus, this is a list that plays the best of the Orcus cards and gets all of the, the goodness, like the Little Red Hand story, get all the goodness without the drawbacks. So yes, I like three crescendos. I like hard drawing a crescendo. So that way, what? I can just set up my Babel now. I like hard drawing a crescendo in a return. So now I can just get, like, dude, these are so good. These are literally, like I said, the best spells and traps in my deck. The Orcus cards are great. I even was considering playing their trap. It's a double monster reborn. You tribute a machine link and target two monsters in your grave and special both of them. Any monsters in the game? That's pretty nice. Like, bring back boar sword. Bring back anything you want. That's nice, bro. So, uh, don't knock my list until you try it. You're going to look at it and be like, this Bricky, because he plays three returns and three crescendo. But you haven't even, you've never tried a list with three returns and three crescendo. You're probably scared of ever trying it because they're hard ones returns. Fear is not in my way, bro. I try it all, bro. Even if it looks like it doesn't work, I'm never scared to try it. That's how you figure new things out. Curiosity, man. So starting with the extra deck, I play one of each Orcus Link. If you are not playing Orcustrion, you are not an Orcus player. You're breaking my heart if you're not playing him. This card is so good. It's so good. Where are my Orcus players at? We know what's up, baby. Real Orcus players, not uh, Orcus engine player. Orcus players. Come on, baby. This card is nuts. Skill Drain on Legs. Spell Speed 2 can be activated in a damage step. Indestructible? What more could you ask for? If it had any other effects, it'd be broken. And it already is. Topologics. This deck plays the Topologics effectively. Three sacks. How do you trigger Zeroboros forcibly? Um, so, okay, I want to spe specify something really quick because there's a, mi a common misconception with how these work. For one, everybody thinks Bomber only works if you summon to his own. People have even told me where, like, they've seen a duel. In the middle of my duel, my opponent summoned to a zone a Link Monster points to. I trigger my Bomber. They reply in the comments saying, you can't. Only if you summon a Bomber zone. I don't know why people don't read cards first before they try to correct you, but this card... That's how Zeroboros works. If a monster is summoned to a link, a zone a Link monster points to, it doesn't have to be his zones. It can be your opponent's. But how you forcibly trigger this of your own volition without relying on your opponent doing it is it's simple. So you're starting your combo in this extra monster zone. Towards the end of it, you're going to jump zones and put this bad boy right there. What you're going to leave in this column right here is an underclock taker. It can be summoned under restriction. I basically crafted this combo myself i'm not trying to be oh i'm so good blah 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 no like this is something i developed myself thinking how the heck because we just got this card yesterday i was sitting there thinking how the heck can i as an orcus player trigger zeroboros of my own volition without being like i have to wait for my opponent to summon elite then i have to wait for them to like it's like they can easily play around it that way when they know that they are the one who would be triggering it but when you have a, a underclock taker you can't summon to his zones so that's why i'm telling you you have to put this here when you have babel you can summon any orcus off of babel Summon it to underclock zone. Now you can interact with Zerboros, triggering his effect because read the card if another monster special summon to a zone a link monster points to, not his zone, you can trigger it. So yeah, that's how we're forcibly um that's how you can forcibly do this. So when you play like Dracos and, and Stun and Guru, and they're like set three, set four, in phase, you're like, uh uh uh, in phase, Babel, summon, in phase, blow you out. Let's go, gang. Same thing with Trishbania, insane going second. Like I do this all the time, like going second, where I like Resolve Trishbania, same turn, summon Bomber, Resolve Bomber, nuke all back row, all front row, I've literally nuked the entire field, <laughs> like going second, these are so good, I've never not played Topologics in Orcus, and now look at how everybody's playing Orcus, they want to play Bomber Control, I've never seen a Bomber in an Orcus player's list until the recent ban list when Rusty got hit, boy I was playing this when Rusty was out, I've always knew the value and the advantage you can get out of Topos, as well as the Orcus players, because this is how we used to play it back in the day, we did Scrap Recyclers, Armageddon's when Orcus first came out in Soul Fusion, we were playing like Topologic Control, so yeah. I know I'm, I'm really high energy. The charisma is a little bit overbearing. The enthusiasm is not misplaced. My intentions are in the right place. I'm really just here to help educate you, entertain you, and also I'm passionate about my deck. I care about Orcus. They are definitely my top five. Orcus are in my top five favorite decks. They are in there, baby. One Skull Dread. Uh, it's, it's not like a legal Skull Dread, but again, I don't own Skull Dread. My friend actually uh, gave the Skull Dread to me. So yeah, get yourself an English Skull Dread, but I do like this one. It's cute. You know, shout out to my teammate Chris. Um, then we got one service. I wish I had room for more nightmares, but the extra deck is so tight, it's virgin tight. And then one nightmare. For the XYZs, I play Ding. 
and Zombie Slime. Zombie Slime's pretty easy to get to if you have the right hand. But it's not like you have to summon him. It's just nice to be like, like the best board. And I've never made this board, so I'm not going to tell you, like, I'm not going to lie and say, yeah, I put this up. But the best board that this deck can make, if you open the hand that I picture in my head, like, I can grab the cards from my deck right now and show you the perfect hand, but you're not going to draw the perfect hand every time. Let's be realistic. But the best board you can put up, you can actually put up a Savage, a Zombie Stein, a Crescendo, and a, a Gamma Seal. Now, like, if you wanted to just go straight into Appaloosa, you can do that. But what I value over cards like Appaloosa and cards like Don Draxter is I value cards that negate anything. So I, that's why I like Gamma Seal. That's why I like Crescendo. That's why I like Zombie Stein. That's why I like Savage. That's why I'm not playing Appaloosa in my list. In addition, the reason is I don't even have it. But I don't think I would play it in this list even if I had it because I like the Omni Negates over the, okay, Appaloosa against Sky Strikers. Like, come on now. Uh, so Savage is good against everything. Omni Negates just are good in every matchup. But if you play Appaloosa, there's a risk that you might be playing a deck that it's not good against. I hope you guys understand where I'm coming from. And then the two fusions. Now guess what I get to do? A test hand for you guys. To make all the non-believers believers. believers. Alright. So after today, if you were not a believer, if you were not a believer in Orcus, I believe after today, my friend, you're gonna believe in Orcus. You're gonna be a believer. I believe that you're gonna be a believer. Alright, you're gonna be a believer. Yes, sir, yes today. Uh, let's get a power shuffle, actually. I'm not about to uh, draw 18 of the same cards. No, sir. I love this list, though. I really love this list. You guys have no idea how long I've been working on this list. Ratios was the biggest problem with this deck, bro. And it's a 60-card deck. How do you have space issues in a 60-card deck? You guys are going to slowly start to understand why 3-stacks play 60-card decks so much. Because there's just so many ideas that I have, and I'm trying to cram so many things into one deck. But I'm not cramming it in a way where it doesn't work. I pick and choose and hand select, like through process of, of elimination, what works the most consistently and what is niche. Niche meaning, okay, it works here and there, but it doesn't always. So I pick the ones that come up the most, so I get the most consistent list with the best results, the most variety in boards. And variety is fun because you don't want to play a boring salmon grade that puts up the same board. You want to be like, I can put up a different board every time. And this deck does that. You can go topologic control, any of the topologics of your choice. You can go um, bomber control, you know, you can put up gamma seal and, uh, you know, waterfront. You can go for savage plays, zombie stein, standard orcas boards, wind control. There's just so many options and variety of the boards you can make. This deck is never going to be boring to play because there's too many different things you can do. Like, the extra deck is the limits to this deck. Because the skies really are the limits, but it's really the extra deck because you can only play 15. And there are cards that I want to play, like Deco Talker, Borosaur Dragon, Deco Talker. You know, generic Dark Links that can be easily summoned under the Orcus combo. I hope that um that was a good enough shuffle. Connector, Waterfront, Hardcore, Allure Darkness, Dogman. This is a test hand. First things first, since Dogman's in our hand, we can freely activate a lore with... Oh yeah, let's activate Waterfront first. Freely activate a lore without RNG. Drew one, drew two. Crescendo is not a dead card to draw. So what we're going to go ahead and do... So if you were playing around hand traps, you would keep the Dogman in your hand. But this is a test hand, bro, so I'm just going to banish him. But if you wanted to play around hand traps, you would keep him, banish this. And the reason being is because if they Ash or, or Valor that, you could still use the Dogman to... Put two monsters on the field, but it's a test hand, bro. It's just a test hand, just to show you guys what the deck can do. Um, so one counter on the waterfront. The next thing we're gonna do is normal connector, effect, effect, effect. <laughs> All right, we're gonna bust out um uh, our boy here. If you want to use his effect, you can. You absolutely can. Nobody's stopping you. Alright, those. So if you want to, for example, you can go Dolphin, pitch, uh, I, I actually, I wouldn't pitch Harper early. I would just save it so that they don't know I have it yet. Pitch the connector for, uh, for Dolphin, you know, look at their hand. It doesn't matter what you snipe, it's just, it's a test hand, bro. Some things just ain't that serious. Go into service, uh, go into Mermaid. So when those two left the field, that got three counters. When this hit the field and left, that got four counters. And then when we summon this, and discard heart for cost, we are going to go ahead and special nightmare. Now, unfortunately, we cannot summon Skulldred because he's a not a dark attribute. We don't have those kind of extenders. The ones we have are going to lock us in the dark. So the waterfront is going to be a powerful what? Follow up. Why? Because we can search our Gamma Seal and now we can Kaiju anything we want on the follow up. So if they break our board and don't OTK us and put up a monster that we can't deal with, 
we can just search the gamma seal. So if you want to, you can search the gamma seal early in case they do something to this and get rid of it. So let's just say, bam, go ahead and search out the gamma seal. Hard drawing crescendo. No, don't play three. It breaks. All right, bro. Link, I'm going to do me. You do you, baby. Nobody's stopping you from playing Yukio, and I'm going to play my deck. Galatea, let's go. Uh, so now we're going to go ahead and do this. Let's activate Harp. Now we're locked in the darks. Harp is going to go ahead and special summon Skeletor. We're going to activate Nightmare targeting Galatea. Send the World Wand because that's another extender. So your board's going to be even more bonkers. Trust me. You guys, this deck is so fun. I'm telling you, I have a blast playing pure Orcus. I consider this pure Orcus just with a bunch of cards that start up the Nightmare combo. So this is pure Orcus to me. Because even when we played pure Orcus back in the day, we were playing Scrap Recyclers, Armageddon Knights, and Greffers. Those aren't Orcus cards. Orcus need those kind of starters. You can't just play a deck with, like, the only monsters you play are Orcus. Because they have to get to the grave to get their effects. So this is pure Orcus in my personal opinion. You don't have to agree. But I'm not bashfully imposing my opinion on you. So I ask you don't do the same to me. Uh, Link... Let's go into Dengirsu. I mean Longirsu. Dengirsu is going to come out eventually because he's my boy. Let's go into Longirsu. We can go into a uh, top of logic if we wanted to, too. Uh, and let's go ahead and banish our Skeletor. Summon our Galatea. Actually, let's not banish yet. Let me think, let me think, let me think. Okay. So we can go Long Bomber, but the problem with that is... We don't have Babel. Oh, but we can still go Bomber because our opponent can trigger Bomber. I think that's what I want to do. Either that or I go for Zephyros. Is the top of logic? Yeah, let's do that for style points. We can go Bomber or the top of logic. It doesn't matter. Um, I do know one thing. They could use it against us, but we'll probably end up using the Crescendo before they get there. So I'm just going to do that just to show you guys you can. You don't have to make the top of logic. I'm not telling you you have to, um, but I'm going to do it. Let's go ahead and get this. The Zephyr, nah, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go for a, a pure a pure Orcus board. That's what I decided. So you See, now you guys get it. You see all the options? Wasn't I sitting here debating on what the... Is this Salaman Greats? Are you just putting up the same board every time with Dweller and Stalio? No, you have so many options. You have to argue with yourself. Like, what do I do? I can summon this. I can summon this. I can summon this. I can bring this. I like you. You could do so much. You can even do this. You could have done this. Like, there's just too much you can do with this deck. And I love that about this deck. I love that so much. Our Kushrion's coming out. Look at our Banish Zone. We're loading it with those Orcus. Uh, Banish Skeletor. Bring back Galatea. Make sure she's pointing. Uh, make sure he's pointing to her so they're both protected. Use her effect. Let's shuffle back that World Wand. And what you can do, if you didn't already have Nightmare in your grave, this is why Einsets is so good. People do not even read this card. They say it's bad and they don't even read it. Oh, yeah, we are going to get Babel. Oh, so this could have been Bomber Longirsu. Oh, snap. That's right. I forgot I drew Kashinda. We can. Yeah, so we can. We can. Honestly, we can if we wanted to. Set that. We really can. Or we can just use our Custrion to be. So you can either go Bomber to Nuke Fields or Custrion to negate entire fields. It's your choice. You can even go the top. Oh, my gosh. There's just too much sauce, bro. There's too many choices. Get rid of Kyoto. We don't need the, the uh, counters anymore. We already searched the Gamma Seal. Highly doubt that we're going to make a Skuldred next turn. So, yeah, Skuldred is out of the question for this test hand. Uh, so, we'll set that. Activate it. You can. So, again, your board could have just been this instead, and it would have been fine. You could have done this. Look, 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 look. You could have done this. You could have summoned him there. It would have triggered. He wouldn't be destroyed. Read the card. That's what it says. And then you would have this, this, Long Gear Suit Ascend, Bomber to Nuke Fields. So, you'd have three different interruptions. But what I'm choosing instead is this. I, this is my board. That, and I'm telling you, there's no right or wrong. It's just pick what you want. Pick your poison. Uh, so set and activate the crescendo. So this board is very simplified, and it doesn't look like it's going to do a lot. But once you get to uh, get that stuff snowballing on that Babel, I'm telling you, you're going to be riding like, bro. So you're going to crescendo your opponent. You use Nightmare on your opponent's draw phase. You can target that, for example. Uh, you're going to go ahead and send off the uh, skeleton and then you're gonna get another disruption because of nightmares there so you're gonna get three disruptions uh, the crescendo is a disruption you're gonna send this banish this target long gear suit 
Where's Long Gear Suit? Because I summoned Long Gear Suit and then I, I put him back in the extra deck by accident when I was doing that display. So you're going to target Long Gear Suit and you're going to summon him here so that also... Or you can summon him here pointing to their extra monster zone. So no matter what, even if they don't put Link monsters pointing to that Link monster zone, he's pointing to the Link they put up so our Custrion can negate it. So then you debate because you have uh, four banished Orcas, which means you can't resolve both. You debate, do I do Long Gear Suit or do I do our Custrion? Do I do Longirsu and Galatea, or do I do Custrion and Galatea? And what I would do is I would go Arcustrion and Galatea. So I just shuffle all of these back, all of them. You just recycled your entire engine. And Crescendo is going to search out another copy. So you have a negation plus a follow-up. And we don't need Einsatz because we pretty much are going to be loading our grave again very soon. So we're going to set the return so we can draw two next turn. You see how fun it is playing Orcus this way? This is Orcus. This is an Orcus deck. This is sick, bro. I love this deck. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching this profile. Thank you guys for supporting my channel. Thank you guys for everyone who has donated already. It means the world to me that you donated. Why does it mean so much, 3 Stacks? Because I barely get any donations. And I'm not blaming anybody. And I'm not saying that y'all suck because you don't. Or you're better or worse because you don't. I'm just saying that I appreciate the real ones that do go out of their way to do that. Because that speaks volumes. It means so much to a brother like me, knowing they're like, bro, we know that you're paying out of pocket. We know you're spending your bill money on this. I appreciate that. So thank you guys to all of my subscribers. Whether you have donated, whether you support, whether you're a Patreon, it does not matter. You're sub to this channel, so you're a part of the family too. Peace out, baby. Stay positive.